So around two years ago, I posted a video talking about Seagate Ironwolf Pro versus Seagate Exos Enterprise drives, and if you should use Enterprise disks in your NAS device. Now I've used WD drives for years, but at the time, WD were falling behind a bit in their capacity and price per terabyte race, and I also wasn't happy about them slipping those SMR drives into the NAS WD red range and how they handled that whole mess. So I had at the time stopped buying them, but that was two years ago and there's been a lot of water under the bridge. Putting aside the new Seagate hammer drives, which I've covered here also, WD actually compete well again on capacity. Their pricing has been competitive and the public Backblaze drive reliability data actually shows that they're a little bit ahead in terms of reliability. As for SMR, WDR, for now at least, generally more transparent, and it's currently Seagate who I think are letting the side down here with their extensive use of SMR in the desktop Barracuda drives, and even with some slipping in of SMR into their surveillance drives. The transparency, generally, on SMR also isn't still what it should be. For example, both these Skyhawk datasets here from Seagate site one shows that the SMR drive is being slipped into the Skyhawk range, while the other one omits the detail altogether, but I digress. So, given all this, though I still buy Seagate drives, I've been buying more WD drives again also, and one of the things you notice from both of these is that the NAS drives are generally still far more expensive. So, just like the question I posed two years ago asking if you should buy NAS drives versus Enterprise drives, I'm looking again today, but I'm going to compare the Ultrastar versus the Red Pro. And we're going to look at if they really differ from a performance perspective and how they compare for power consumption and noise also. So for this I've chosen a commonly bought middle of the range drive at about 18 terabytes and there will be another one coming on the current Exos versus Ironwolf Pro from Seagate and due to popular demand actually I have some tests currently running on the Toshiba variants also so you can stay tuned for that. I would also link below all the drives under test here today so you can go check on the pricing because it does vary considerably, sometimes from day to day. Let's start now with pricing and availability, and this is all based on SATA interface drives as it provides the most options and they're also very common for use in NAS devices. Pricing on these drives can be all over the place and it's heavily influenced by availability. Often the Ultrastar is cheaper, but it varies by retailer and over time. And having tracked these prices for years, I can say that assuming availability, the Ultrastar Enterprise drive is most commonly the cheapest, and sometimes by a large margin of up to maybe 25 or even 30%. But during testing on this video, you can come to the understanding of how big a factor the price plays, and if one drive gives you actually better results for your use case than the other. Now in the US, the best prices were available at time of recording on Amazon. Newegg are also in the mix, but I'm not personally a fan of buying here due to the extensive marketplace selling and the complexity around that. You have to watch out for this on the Amazon site also, but in either case, I would recommend buying from an authorized seller for warranty reasons. B&H seem more expensive right now, but it isn't always the case, and Amazon, Newegg, B&H, Microcenter, and Best Buy are all approved resellers. But many of the retail players here don't sell the Ultrastars, but all had similar pricing on the Red Pro at this particular time. So after the testing, I'm gonna summarize what this all means. So now if we actually physically inspect the drives, they look identical, other than the sticker. They use the same casing, the same top helium seal, and actually the logic boards themselves can't be told apart from the traces or component locations. However, interestingly, if we weigh the drives, the Red Pro comes in at five grams heavier. So these drives are not physically the same. There's something going on here, and it's possible it's the plat account, but it could equally be something else. Now interestingly, there are actually two Ultra Stars that you can get in the 18 terabyte capacity. There's the DC550 drive, which we're looking at today, and then there's also the DC555. Now both of these mention that they use a three-stage actuator, they use Energy Assisted Magnetic Recording, or EAMRs for short, for increased data density, and both of them also use nine platters and 18 heads. Now the Red Pro mentions none of this, but WD isn't as transparent about the internals on its NAD drives compared to its enterprise drive. So maybe the NAS drives are based on the DC550 or the 555, or maybe there's a difference. So let's see if there's any significant variance to be found in the performance that might tell us more. Okay, so getting to that, I performed extensive performance testing on both these drives to see how they compare head to head. We want to discover if either drive provides better performance for a certain use case 
to see if there are any issues with using these drives for purposes other than their stated use case, for example, NAS or enterprise use. Now in this testing, I run five types of tests for each drive. There's a large file write test where the disk is filled to 99% with 10 gig files sequentially. We do a large file read test where all of those files are then read back off the drive. Then there's a mixed file write test where 5,500 mixed size files for a total of 10 gig are written. And then a mixed read test where these are again read back from the drive. And then we do a non-sequential rewrite test where 20% of those 5,500 mixed files are rewritten in place into the same locations overwriting the current files. And this kind of simulates a non-sequential or if you like random write test. Now for the data nerds, here's an example of the raw data from one test set. And each test is repeated 10 times with the results for each of the 1,782 10 gig tests average. Now consistency is typically within around 1% on the right tests and that's due to some variance in how the caching is used and it's usually within a quarter of a percent on the read tests. The non-sequential right test can vary by about 2%. Okay, so looking at the right performance, this one is interesting as a dip in large right seen on the Red Pro is actually very common on drives when the disk is filled sequentially non-SOP. I see this on disks of all sizes and from all manufacturers, and I suspect it's just how the drive manages its file metadata during the write process. As the drive nears its fill, it has to go back and move some data around, which distracts it from the task of writing data. Now, the Ultrastar 18 terabyte in particular doesn't seem to do this, but this is a bit odd because this behavior is seen on other drives like the Ultrastar 20 terabyte, 24, and the 26 terabyte version also. Other than this, Actually, performance is very similar, with the Red Pro performing better in the later stages after that dip, and both drives max out at around 273 megabytes per second, which is along the lines of what is promised in the data sheets, which is a, a sustained rate of 272 megabytes for the Red Pro and 269 for the Ultrastar. Now, the Ultrastar completes tests at an average of 212.2 megabytes per second, and that's about 3% faster than the Red Pro, which does it at 205.5 megabytes per second. I'm going to show a summary of all those averages, by the way, at the end, so you can compare the perf tests and visualize how the two drives compare across all the tests. Now, next is the large file read test, and the Ultrastar performs slightly better across the entire test set, with a max throughput of 285.6 megabytes per second paired compared to 281.5 from the Red Pro. Overall, the Ultrastar completes the test an average of 217.2 megabytes per second versus 212.6 for the Red Pro. So it's about a 2% advantage to the Ultrastar. So it looks like the Ultrastar firmware is tuned to provide improved and more consistent large file read and write performance. Then looking at mixed file size tests, we'll start again with the write performance. And here the performance is closely matched by both drives with, if anything, a slightly more consistent result for the Red Pro. Here, both drives complete the test with the Ultrastar coming in at 154.03 megabytes per second and the Red Pro at 153.95 megabytes per second. So both of them are extremely close, scoring virtually exactly 154 megabytes per second each. Now the mixed read performance test, we can see that the Red Pro does a little better than the Ultrastar with improved speeds for about 75% of the test. Now for this test, the Red Pro comes in with a peak speed of 262.9 megabytes per second and the Ultrastar around 3% lower at 255. Averages are still pretty close, however, with the Red Pro averaging 200.9 megabytes per second for the entire test and the Ultrastar producing an average of 198.7, so it's around 1% lower. And then finally, we have the mixed rewrite test where 20% of those non-sequential files are rewritten and this operation type appears more suited to the Red Pro with a more consistent performance curve than the Ultrastar. The test completes at an average of 122.6 megabytes per second on the Ultrastar, with the Red Pro completing it at 3.5% greater speed at 127 megabytes per second. So for random rewriting of small files, the Red Pro does come out on top. And if we look at overall stats to compare the two, there isn't really much in it. But you can see that for large file read and write tests, the Ultrastar is a little faster with a 3% upside for writes and 2% for reads, and there's nothing in that overall for the mixed write operation. But the Red Pro does better in the mixed read test by about a percentage point, and it performs 3.5% better in the mixed rewrite test. So for smaller file operations, the Red Pro has a marginal advantage at least. Now, if we look at how long each test takes, 
is a different representation of the same data, but it gives you an idea how long it's actually going to take to fill and drain these disks. That large write advantage turns a 23.3 hour write on the Ultrastar into a 24.1 hour write on the Pro, with the retaking about half an hour longer on the Red Pro disk also. All the other tests are pretty close. And a full write of the mixed files, which includes about 9.8 million files in this case, takes around 32.1 hours on the Ultrastar and 32.2 hours on the Red Pro. Mixed reads of these files are also close run at 24.9 hours, on the Ultrastar and around 20 minutes quicker on the Red Pro. The mixed rewrite test takes around 8.1 hours on the Ultrastar to rewrite 2 million of those files and it's only about 7.8 hours on the NAS unit. So overall, the Ultrastar is slightly better taking 4 days, 15 hours and 15 minutes to complete an iteration of all these tests compared to the Red Pro which takes 43 minutes longer at 4 days, 15 hours and 57 minutes. So other than some firmware tweaks, there's very little between these two for real world performance that you may see in a PC, NAS or storage server. And given that the, these are averages over 10 tests, this is data that is based on 45 days of non-stop testing for each drive. Okay, so moving on to the power, um, and then we're going to go and look at the noise made by each drive to see if there's a differentiation there. For this testing, I use a Sabrent USB enclosure, and this draws about 1.2 watts as a baseline without disk inserted. And the numbers here you're going to see are going to include that base draw from the Sabrent in the numbers. All the numbers are very close. And I was expecting to see the Red Pro, if anything, to come in a little lower. Performance of both discs is in fact fairly similar. But from idle, the Ultra Start is a little lower at 7.6 watts at the wall versus 8 watts for the Red Pro. For all the mixed file operations, power draw between the drivers is near identical, with the Ultra Start around 0.1 watts lower on consumption for the large write and read operation test. So there's really not much in it, but there's certainly no advantage to the NAS drive. And then for sound, and this is a measurement that's taken at a distance of 50 millimeters to the drive in a closed sound isolated box. Now it isn't perfect and DB measurements are difficult to take precisely, but I took a lot of care to keep the test as clean as possible and to run them a number of times to isolate any external noise pollution. And in this case, the Red Pro is again, consistent with power use, a little noisier at idle. And we see similar slight increases from the Red Pro over the Ultrastar across the tests, with the exception of the mixed rewrite test, which is very close, but just goes to the Red Pro. Now in other tests, the Ultrastar is typically slightly quieter from between 1 dB and 0.2 dB. In summary for all of this, there isn't much in it. Uh, but if you expected the NAS drive to be either lower power, quieter, or both, doesn't seem to be the case. Right. Before I get to my conclusions, just quickly, do please remember to like this if it was interesting or useful. I would love you to subscribe to get more storage and compute content in your feed from me. Uh, this is a really small channel and this support actually helps immensely. And it tells me that the work I'm doing here is useful and valued. So thank you very much for every bit of support I get. So what do we conclude from all this? Well, given that the Red Pro and the Ultrastar come in with the same workload ratings, MTBF numbers and warranty periods, and that though each has areas it performs slightly better at, the performance is very close. This says to me that you can select based on price and availability and you don't need to buy a NAS specific drive just because you're gonna put the drive into a NAS. Now though it's not always the case, enterprise drives here are regularly available more cheaply, though it isn't so easy to find them at normal retail outlets. So you're more likely to have to buy them online. But if you do, I encourage you to buy from approved resellers. I put the Amazon links down below for these, you can check them but just please check on the actual seller and that they are backed by the WD warranty. Now I personally use enterprise drives for both WD and Seagate in most of my arrays and I have some Toshibas now also. And this is usually just driven by price and honestly a suspicion that they're basically the same drive with a different label on them. Now the testing tells me there are variances in the firmware and there's definitely something different about the hardware, but by and large, I think they're extremely similar drives from my performance perspective. And finally, it's just left me to say thank you for watching this to the end. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next.